you do that, there have to be rules. Outside the prison. When you weren't there, I wondered. Oh, I didn't really see you like that. I'm not coming out. I tried to phone. Oh, that got cut off last year. What well, you should have told me. And you need a phone out here on your own in the middle of nowhere. No, I was all right. What if anything had happened? You could die out here. Nobody would be any the wiser. Well, you're back now. I've got you to look after me. Yeah. That's how it's going to stay with me. Not going back in. Yeah. Well, you could have been home months ago. Yes, I know. I know it was stupid trying to escape. Causing trouble. But I just I just couldn't take being locked up any longer. Yes, I know, darling. No. No, you don't know any. You can't know what it was like. I just can't take being shut in anymore. It's terrifying. You know what I'm cooking. Not steak and kidney pie. I know. Can we afford it? No. We can't afford this either. Jeez, we are celebrating. No, not celebrating. Forgetting, huh? Starting afresh. Okay. I promise. And we can't afford steak and wine. Hey, is this what they give you when you come out of prison? Oh, you've got to be joking. Bus fare more like. Well, where do you get it then? Court script? Uh, in the drawer. Where did you get it? It was this guy. Prison visitor. He used to come regular. Once a week. What guy? What for? Oh, I don't know what they do it for. Oh, I'm sorry, love. He was a funny old bloke. Strange. <laughs> Said he, he knew what it was like being locked in. He'd been in a Nazi concentration camp during the war. Well, you better go round and thank him. Do you know where he lives? Hmm? I got his address.
I knew you'd come. I thought I'd just look in and say thanks. That was good of you. And how was it at home? Good. In prison, you had doubts. I needn't have. <laughs> oh, you were a bad prisoner, Chuck, my friend. Bad? Listen, being locked up takes everybody different. Some don't mind. Others, they just can't take it. They go stir-crazy. You think that is what happened to you? Is that why you try to escape, even though you know it will do you no good? When I was a kid, if I misbehaved, they used to shut me in a cupboard. I'd scream, kick, shout to get out, to get the freedom. They didn't think I was sorry, so they'd leave me there longer. I swore no prison would ever hold me as long as I lived. I know, Chuck, I know. The midnight memories of the concentration camp bring me out in a cold sweat even today. We are kindred spirits, you and I. Quite simply, we hold a terror of being shut in. So, this is where it all happens. Eh? Uh, an expression. This is where the action is. Where you earn your daily bread. Oh, oh I survive. Yes. Oh, like I say, I just called in to say thanks. I'd better be on my way. Goodbye. What will you do? Find a job. Where? The welfare bloke. He gave me a list. Rehabilitation. Such places are not good. They either regard you with suspicion or they trust you at the top of their voice. Yeah, well, I guess you're right. But I don't exactly have a wide choice. Turn over the closed sign, will you? And lock the door. I have something to show you. This way. Through here. This is where it all happens. Suppose you get a customer. Well, they'll call again. They're used to my comings and goings around here. Somehow, I don't think you're going to get very rich, Mr. Blake. I am rich, Mr. Spillers. What is this? Some kind of zoo? I would prefer to call it my collection. It must be worth a fortune. It is. Do you sell them? No. I may when my work is complete. What work is that, then? Research into new methods of training. Well, what for? What is the point? Open zoos or safari parks in the stately homes of England. The cages? They're all open. Exactly. Well, they safe? Uh, certainly. That is the point. Chuck, imagine. Zoos without cages. It must be possible. It is possible to contain an animal without bars now, surely. You can see the benefit of that. Tame, are they? Oh, no. They are not tame. These are wild animals. But how? How did you get them? I caught them. You caught them? It only takes the right bait. Lay the right bait, and almost any creature will walk in of its own accord. Then you tame them? No. No. I train. I do not tame. You see, in nearly all cases, a creature that has enjoyed freedom of life in the wild will never become tame. Captivity is loss of freedom, like prison. Except this lot did nothing to get locked up for. Well, certainly they committed no misdemeanor. At the time of their imprisonment, they were innocent, as were you. Well, under such circumstances, the best you will get from a caged creature is subservience. Why did you invite me here? I did not invite you here. You came of your own accord. Oh, come on. In prison, I passed some kind of test. You chose me. You wanted me here for a reason. You had done already what I wanted. You came to say thank you. Oh. Now, many would not have, but I knew you would. Chuck, we have talked, you and I, long and often. 
There has developed, dare I suggest, an understanding, a relationship. Let me say simply that it's taken too many months to find someone I felt I could trust. Someone who would understand. Thank you very much. Ah, now you disappoint me. That expression of gratitude was made in mockery. I'm sorry, Martin. I, I don't want to seem ungrateful, but to be frank, Martin, I don't like it here. You don't? There's something wrong. I sensed it the minute I came in. Nothing is wrong. Look, if you want your money back. Now, if I do say this, did I make any mention of money? Oh, I'm sorry. Perhaps you dislike animals? I like a cat that purrs and a dog that wags its tail. No! Don't touch it! Oh, no! Are you all right? I don't know. I tried to warn you. That's how you train them. I was about to explain. When I found out for myself. Here, let me see. Oh, there is no burn. I am so glad. You are very lucky. You said you wanted help. Yes, I had to go away just for a few days. I had to find someone to feed my animals. You will. I will pay very good money. And at the end, I will give you a reference which will help you in getting a permanent job. I don't know, Mr. I will leave clear instructions. There is really nothing to it. Watch. You see? It is very simple. Perfectly safe. When you know how. He's a nut. He sounds like a nice old man to me. You didn't see the place. You didn't see it. No, but I can see the groceries his money's bought. Just be thankful. Your first day out, you've got a job with money in advance. He said he knew I was innocent. What of? Well, you know what of? Safe breaking. Yes, but you were guilty, weren't you? I've been every time. That place stank. Yeah? It stank of fear. He said you never can tame an animal born in the wild. Never. So you capture a free-running animal and imprison it in a cage until it dies. Can you imagine that? No, I don't think I can. I don't want to. And there's another thing. I just realised what it was about that place the minute I walked in. None of the animals ever made any noise. It just gave out this stench of fear. Chuck. I'm here. Yeah? Well, he didn't spend two years waiting for the moment when you climbed into our bed to talk about a daft old man in a pet shop. You got other ideas? Tell me. I thought about you every night. I'm nervous, Chuck. You like being nervous. Mm. So? It's just. It's just. I'm a bit of rough, eh? <laughs>
Something wrong with it? Huh? The food. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Well, you've hardly eaten a mouthful. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just can't get that stench out of my nostrils. Is that a comment on my cooking? <laughs> you know what I mean. Is there any more of that wine? No. You got any facts? No. Have you got anything in this house? I had to give up smoking. It was either that or the car, and I couldn't live out here without transport. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, the welfare did warn me. It'll not be easy at first, they said. He'll have to find his feet and gain his pride. Leave it, Ianni, will you? Funnily enough, nobody mentioned how difficult it might be for me. Never a word about that. There's a safe down there among them cases. Pathetic. Like old Bluick himself. You take away the so-called breadwinner and leave the wife high, dry and stranded. Then two years later, hey, presto, there he is on the doorstep again. He's got to be loaded. Oh, he must loaded. be loaded. The only mistake she ever made was to marry a Peterman. It'd be just a type to think a bank was insecure. I'll leave his cash in an old safe you could blow away with a pop of wind. Stop it, Chuck. Just stop it now, will you? It'll give us a start. Or a finish. Suppose there is a couple of grand in that safe. Where's that going to get us? Well, it's a couple of grand more than we've oh, got. yes. Pay the electricity bill, get the phone reconnected, go to Mallorca for three weeks. I don't wish to sound materialistic, but if I have married a compulsive thief, I wish at least he'd think big. What are you trying to say? Nothing. Just trying to stop myself from screaming, that's all.
I will be but just one moment. Mr. Blewick? Yes? I'm Anne Spillers. Chuck Spillers' wife. Oh. How pleased I am to meet you. And how is Chuck? Oh. I'd rather hope you could tell me that. Why? Well, I gather you visited him whilst he was inside. So now he is released, there is no further call for my service? <laughs> no. And he was very impressed by your kindness. I'm glad. You haven't seen him since he came out. Which is something one begins you to do. <laughs> Frankly, it is best that way. Partly, it is what we should expect. After all, it is a logical conclusion of our own work. Aren't you beautiful? <laughs> he lacks only a good home and a new mistress. Well, not me, I'm afraid. I've got a living to earn. But with, once again, a husband to play his rightful role. Chuck didn't come home last night. So soon? Well, that is sad. He said he was coming here. I see. Thank you, Mr. Blewick. I suppose you didn't give him any money either. Please, let me know if you hear anything. So what are you suggesting, Mrs. Spillers? I'm just trying to tell you what I saw, Sergeant. I wanted some advice. Advice isn't quite my line, I'm afraid. You'd do better at the Marriage Guidance Council. There's nothing wrong with my marriage. Look, your husband didn't come home last night. That's not normally a situation we like to become involved in. This has nothing to do with the situation, as you keep calling it. He intended to come home last night. I know he did. But something better turned up. I beg your pardon. Uh, look, I I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. And he did go to the pet shop. But Mr. Blewick, who we know, by the way, says he didn't. But I saw Chuck's jacket there. Just think a moment, Mrs. Spillers. Ask yourself whether you're sure this is something you want us to know about. After all, your husband's only been home for a day or two. Leave it a bit longer. If he doesn't turn up, come and see me again. And uh, when he does come home, please ask him not to make us too interested in him.
are we used to? Chuck. Find something you can stick down to test it. What for? Don't argue, just do as I say. Careful what you touch. How's this? Good. Now, stick it through and wave it from side to side. Careful. Well, how am I supposed to get you out? Can you lift me? Oh, you must be joking. Just a minute. Right. How's that? I'll try it. Oh, 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 oh. OK. I'll be back in ten minutes. What are you going to do? Well, if I get the police... No! Don't get the law! They'll... I tried to open the safe. They'll put me away. Oh, Chuck! It was a trap. I fell right into it. Well, what am I supposed to do? Find me something to stand on. Uh, which way's the shop? Behind you, through the double doors. Don't touch any of the cages. Why not? Electricity, thousands of volts. Are those things dangerous? About as dangerous as I am.
not asleep, Jack. I'm restless. Highly surprising. My little friend here was restless, too. Something disturbing that? Something, yes. Perhaps the same thing that has disturbed you. Me? I'm OK. It is strange, nevertheless, that over the past two days, you have called out to me many times, mostly in righteous indignation, but occasionally pleading. Yet now that you see me, you complain only of being restless. It's the middle of the night. And you would like me back in my bed. Maybe you have an escape plan, even an accomplice. I want to go to sleep. Ah, and you would like a companion. I should have thought of it before. <laughs> he makes such a noise when anything unusual happens. Good night, Jack. Why did you choose me? With your inbuilt fear of confinement, you are the ultimate challenge. Train you, and I can train anybody. Imagine, Chuck. Prisons without cells that should appeal to you. No ugly buildings, no warders. The prisoners stand still, quite still. Because they are too terrified to move. Will you let me out? Now! Oh, no. Not until you are trained. Now, please, do not try to thwart my plans. If you cause me to close this hatch, then even your loudest scream will do no more than echo round the cell. It will never penetrate the walls. Nobody will hear you, ever. Good evening, miss. Is Detective Sergeant Aldridge here? No, I'm afraid he's gone home long since. Oh. Can I help? No, I don't think so, thank you. Is something wrong, miss? No, I just wanted a quick word. Thank you. It's not Mrs. Spillers, is it? Yes. I got a note here. You were worried about your husband? Oh, yes, I was. But I've just come in to tell you that I found him, so everything's OK. Oh, okay. good. Oh, it's nice of you to tell us, Mrs. Spillers. Where was he? Celebrating with friends. the right bait. And now my collection is complete. For God's sake, Bluick! The concentration camp! Remember, you said you never forget it! <laughs> Nor will I. It was where I formulated this entire idea as I studied the inmates. You see, I was not a captive. I was a captor. Out, it won't. Don't worry. I'll be all right. You carry on. We're undergoing the same training as the rest of the animals, right? Yes. Why? Because he's an art case. But he could explain everything without going through all that electric shock charade. If the bell sounds, go ahead. If the buzzer sounds, don't touch. Brainwashing. Just got a face. 
Good morning, sir. Do you bring business or pleasure? What sort of business would I bring you? Perhaps you are in need for a police dog? An Alsatian, maybe? Someone was talking about you in the station yesterday. A woman. Well, no complaints, I hope. Only that she could find her husband. <laughs> Pets one can house train. Husbands are more difficult. This one was only just out of stir. She said you'd visited it. Mrs. Spillers, oh, she came to see me. Ah, oh, she said she had. What could I say? I gave my address to Chuck Spillers. I always do, in case they need me. Would you like a butter, Rika? You haven't seen it? Nor do I expect to. I was sorry for his wife, but things are often difficult for a few weeks. Thing is, she seems to have scarred as well. We called. Well, she seemed worried. Then what do you want me to do? Nothing. Let us know if you hear anything, that's all. I will. A, a hamster for the boy. Maybe at Christmas. It's probably deliberate. Just keep calm. We didn't miss it, did we? You know, perhaps we dozed off and missed a bell. Well, stick your head through and find out. How can you stay so calm? I get excited when there's something to get excited about. You know what they say. People who stay calm in the face of adversity show either great courage or complete misunderstanding of the seriousness of the situation. That was very intelligent, Chuck. Where did you hear it? Look. Oh, I thought you might have. Chuck. Oh, I'm hungry. We must be in bell time soon. Why us? There's got to be a reason. What did you talk to him about when you were in prison? I don't remember. Anything. Everything. Sex? Huh? Did you talk to him about sex? Between us? I don't know. I might have done. I can't remember. Does it matter? It matters. You see, I am trying to fathom out his mind. Why us? There has to be a reason. Well, you tell me. Perhaps he just likes watching. Watch? Us. Oh, for Pete's sake, Annie. What do we get to share it then? In a second, I'm only eating half. We're being released, aren't we? No, no, no. No. It's a trick. It's a trick. There's got to be a catch. We are being let out, aren't we, Annie? I mean, for, for God's sake, we're still in bell time. What do we do, Annie? What do we do? We don't do anything. Not while he's watching. Well, how do you know he's watching? He's watching us. Well, can't we test it? I mean, let's just test it. Here, boy. Come on, boy. Here, here. Fetch. No! Fetch. Come on, fetch. No! Clear. Come on. It's clear. Quick. No! It's clear. It's clear.
could figure out that fourth sound. The bell. Hmm. The buzzer. The hum of the refrigerated food store. But there's another shorter, sharp click. Twang click. It happens regularly. It's a switch. What, a power switch? Hmm. Big old-fashioned job near the Black Panther's cage. I think our bloke's just made his first mistake. What are you doing? Just giving myself time to think. Oh. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, that's the limitation of the animal's mind. Bell means food, buzzer means pain. And where the human brain wins over them is the ability to figure out that twang click might mean power off. Twang click. Safe to escape if you can get out before the doors slide down. Mm. Pretend to make up to me, okay? I don't want to blow it to realize we've got them wrong. Mm. Okay. Now, next time the twang click goes, just run, okay? No test, no hesitation. Just run. Outside, there's a kind of alleyway which runs alongside the pet shop. Just run like hell. Pretend, remember? Mm -hmm. oh. Who'd buy pets in a crummy area like this? People do. Enough to keep a shop in business. <laughs> yes, I dare say. Only Mrs. Spillers talked about her husband agreeing to feed the animals as if it were a zoo. What did she say to you last night? Well, that she'd found him okay. He'd been celebrating. What's all this in Adolf? My peace of mind. Just happened the lady came in and asked my help the morning out of blinding headache. <laughs> I would have thought you had more important things to do with your time than play nursemaid to a fellow like Chuck Spillers. Yes, you're right. Forget it. Where's the car? Chuck, there's a police station half a mile down the road. How do you know? I went there. What? I told you. They'll put me away. Just blow it, they'll put away. They can't have you for failed intent, can they? Anyway, they didn't care. Nobody wanted to know. Exactly. So what was the point of going oh, I'm and... sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Wait, come on! Not on your life. Oh, you can't let him get away with it. I'm not going to. You stay here and keep watch. Oh, no, let's go In home. In case please. anything goes wrong, if I don't come out, then you go to the law. What are you going to do? I'm going to sort that bastard out.
Is there anything to eat around here? <laughs> yes, I left your supper on the sofa. <laughs> How long has it been? Mm, an eternity. Mm. I'll get rid of this, and then we'll go out and have dinner. Oh, yes, Chuck. I want the open. I want cool air, freedom, space. No, don't! to escape on purpose. Hospital. The worst. 